Good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, meeting, our creative competition, uh, here on November 20th, 2020. Uh, we do, before we get started with the program, we do have some announcements. Uh, we want to make you aware of some upcoming speakers and programs. Uh, this November 27th, uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, we're going to hold a town hall Zoom meeting. So we will be sending out uh, a link to the Zoom meeting. Uh, this is something that we will uh, publish or put out on uh, YouTube and it will not be repeated, so if you don't make this meeting, um, we're not planning to uh, rebroadcast it. So basically what we want to do is get some feedback from people, see what suggestions they might have, uh, help us to understand how well we're doing or not doing. And um, so, again, you will be getting some kind of a message, uh, probably through constant contact sometime in the following week. Uh, on December 4th, we will have another Zoom presentation uh, by Lewis Kemper, who's a photographer, I believe, out of California. And he'll be speaking on using local adjustment tools to make your images beyond ordinary. And again, we'll be publishing more information on this down the road. And the rest of December, we will have a couple of uh, other speakers um, to be named later. Uh, upcoming competitions. This is the last competition of 2020. Our next competition uh, will be a people and pictorial competition on January 8th. Uh, the deadline for that will be December 30th of this year. And on January 22nd, we have a nature pictorial composite uh, competition. And the deadline for that will be January 13th. Uh, I want to point out an obvious, uh, there will be no meetings. Uh, Christmas and New Year's both fall on a Friday, so we will not have meetings on December 25th or January 1st. And again, we encourage you uh, to watch this and all Friday evening meetings at your convenience on the CPS YouTube channel. Uh, the link is on the CPS website homepage or you can open YouTube and search for Cleave Photographic. And we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and choose to be notified whenever a new video is posted. So again, welcome. This is our second creative competition for the 2020-2021 year. Uh, tonight we have 91 images, 46 creative and 45 pictorial and we will be commenting on all of the images. Uh, our judges for the evening. Uh, our first judge is Wendy Hess. Wendy served as an assistant curator at the Akron Art Museum, curating a number of photography exhibitions by artists that included William Christenberry, Edward Curtis, Masumi Hayashi, Dwayne Michaels, and several other ex exhibitions drawn from the museum's permanent collection. She has coordinated traveling shows organized by other institutions, including an enduring interest, the photographs of Alexander Gardner, and the Camera One photographic self-portraits from the Irma's collection. Wendy has two children and is currently helping care for some ailing senior parents. She ran a 501c3 that helped acquire assistive equipment and other materials for special needs students in her local school district. She has written a number of grants, edited and written for script type publications, and she's a regular visitor to the galleries and museums in Northeast Ohio, always interested in new work being presented. Uh, reading for Wendy Hess tonight will be which one of you? Dan, uh, Dan Sandy. Our second judge is Sylvia Banks. Sylvia has a background in art and has served as president of two art leagues. She became serious about photography about 30 years ago. She's a member of the Southwest Camera Club and the Cuyahoga Valley Photographic Society. She has taken numerous workshops with nationally known wild, wildlife photographers. She has had several of her images published she served nine years as photo editor of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park Calendar and spent 15 years of, as chair of the Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Valley National Park's annual photo contest. 
Abstracts in nature have become one of her favorite subjects. <clears throat> and she will, uh, her comments will be read by Michael Smith. Uh, our final judge is John Rivero Resto. He's a multi multidisciplinary artist who began his career in 1972. At the time, he was acting, writing, designing for, and directing religious and traditional Spanish plays. Uh, painting large-scale mu murals became his primary focus starting in 1974. His mural, It's Up to Us, the People, has been named a Cleveland landmark. In addition to his extensive art career, John has, uh, has been a speaker for <clears throat> and conducted many art workshops in area schools and colleges as well as abroad. The past few years, he has enjoyed serving as a competitions judge and guest lecturer at the Cleveland Photographic Society. And he will be read by Bill Keaton. Uh, the, for those not familiar, let's go over the judging criteria. Each judge will score an image on a scale of five to nine. And the final score for each image is the total of all three judges' scores. Images are judged on three criteria, impact, composition, and technique. So tonight, uh, as I said, we are going to comment on all of the images. Uh, tonight, we will begin with creative. And so let me get going with the first image. An interesting approach to a popular, sometimes overly so, subject matter. It has nice color balance and solid composition. At first glance, the background looks black. It takes a bit of looking to see the, the different shades of green and other colors hiding in the black. Okay, those were uh, Wendy Hess's comments. Uh, the image is Autumn Shades by Fran Zanheiser. Uh, 23 points, second place. Sylvia says, good placement of the ship and interesting manipulation of sky and water. The sky is so outstanding, it draws my eye from the main center of interest, the ship, and I think the water pattern is a bit too busy. The image is entitled Boat on the Water by Rich Foley, 20 points. John says, this photograph resembles a kaleidoscope in which a symmetrical image is replicated in a series of mirrors inside a tube, producing a colorful pattern. I say resemble because in a kaleidoscope, all the repeated images are identical in every way. In this photograph, the repeated image have transparency layers, so the overlapping of images effect, which gives the composition depth and definition, is blurred. The result is that the photo, in spite of all the color and repetition of patterns, appears flat. I would experiment with this effect by maintaining the full opacity of the image being repeated and playing with it to add a more visual depth Experiment this by darkening the layers being overlapped. I believe it will also draw the eye to the focus point at the center of the image, and in the process, you can have a lot of fun experimenting. The image is entitled Butterfly Kaleidoscope by Ron Werman. 21 points, honorable mention. An appealing image uh, whose flashiness suits the character of the subject matter. Flipping the image works in this case, well balanced and engaging. The image is entitled Casino Bar by Kathy Amari, 23 points, second place. Very interesting creation. It looks like an abstract painting. Bright colors attract the eye immediately, and there is good placement of the various shapes. I can't think of anything to suggest to change it. The image is entitled Color Collision by Marge Brady. 21 points, honorable mention. Oop, 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 oop. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's try this again. And I'd suggest just read who the, uh, the uh, commenter or the judge is, please. Okay. John says this photo has a simplicity that is appealing. This is achieved by silhouetting the foreground okay. subject, the stems against a certain 
curtain of blurred foliage. Two things can be done to greatly improve the image and make it stand out even more. First, all the interest is in the bottom of the half of the photo, the subject, while the top half is virtually empty. So the solution is to crop part of the top in order to bring up the stems in more prominence and picture balance. Then increase the light and contrast to intensify the silhouetted stem and add visual separation in the background. I guess I'd also do a third thing, increase the vibrancy of the collar for a wow factor. The image is entitled Colorful Shower by Jane Sidney, 19 points. Wendy says, interesting idea, but it has way too much empty space, empty yellow space. Also, reversing the image other than the faces from one side to the other does not make uh, for a stronger composition. The image is entitled Daisy Babies by Joseph Miko, 17 points. Sylvia says, this is a clever idea and a fun image to look at. All objects are sharp, the placement of the glass is good, and the dice and water drops use the empty space well. The image is entitled Dice and Balloons on the Rocks by Fran Marino, 23 points, second place. This photo has an interesting mirror repetition effect, John says. With the lines of the glass were receding into the dark background in a gentle off-centered curve. The final symmetrical element makes the composition more interesting, but the composition can be further improved in the following manner. Reflections are never identical to the actual subject, but less contrasty. I would use this knowledge to burn or darken the reflection at the bottom of the foreground, right along the bottom, to give the glassware a solid floor, shiny floor surface. Then I crop away the extreme bottle on the left. This will move the long stem bottle at the center slightly to the left, thus making the composition a little bit more harmonious. The image is called Endlessly Repeating by Dave Saborik, 21 points, honorable mention. Wendy says, it's an appealing image, but there's some incongruity between the sharply focused falls in the background and the swirling of the leaves uh, in the water in the foreground. I feel like the alterations would work better if they were either somewhat more subtle or if the entire image were altered. The image is entitled Fall Leaf Art by Salvatore Germano, 20 points. Sylvia says, this is a lovely design that was color coordinated with part of the basket. The one color to me was the center of interest, but I think the overall design needs more than that, one, one section to hold much attention. The image is entitled Floral Orb by Mike Kopkis, 21 points, honorable mention. John says this lovely image has a quality of a watercolor painting on rice paper. The ghostly re repetition of petals, which is somewhat pre reproduced by the color strokes in the background, give it an ethereal feel. To improve its composition a little, I would crop a little of the right side of the image. This would move the subject to the center, thus improving the composition. Then I would increase the vibrancy and the lightness of the colors to make the flower stand out better from the background. The image is called Fluttering Coneflower by Kathy Amari, 19 points. Wendy says, this is a case where the creative tweaking needed to be bumped up. It's not fully clear, clear what's been done. There are some interesting colors in the image, but it, it reads a bit flat. The image is called Forlorn Caboose by Gary Merich, 19 points. Sylvia says, this is a unique shot that has wonderful light and dark contrasts. I like the fact that the subjects, doll area and balloon, are in sharp detail, but the window is misty. I also like the fact that the end of the balloon is pointing toward the doll. I wouldn't change anything. The image is entitled Haunting Attic Treasures by Jackie Sieski, 
21 points, honorable mention. John says this is a gorgeous photograph where it seems like the foxes conspired with the camera to stand as posing models. The warm colors and the dancing of light contrasts and change of focus from sharp to soft in the foliage gives it a rich and detailed quality that makes the eyes dance around it. I wouldn't change a thing, but I would improve the composition by cropping the top section until the edge of the photo is only inches from the raised portion of the log on the right and would equally crop on the right until the right edge is almost at the same distance from that part of the log as the top. This would add more visual balance because the dark shape of the log is the dominant feature in the image and provides a wonderful separation of foreground and background. The eye would then follow the gentle curve of the log, beginning at the right top corner of the photograph, along the downward edge of the log, leading the view to the fox on the left, beautifully framed by the dark color of the log, and culminating the focus with the second fox on the right, whose eyes and pose are directing us to the lower corner of the photo, thus completing the compositional triangle. Like I said, those foxes are posing models. The image is entitled In the Wild by Jackie Sieski, 20 points. Typically place, uh, Wendy says, typically placing a small image within a larger space can just look empty. In this case though, the vivid red and green here carefully balanced on the much larger black vertical space, hold their own surprisingly well. Uh, the image is entitled Leaf on Lily Pad by Dave Saboric, 21 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, this reminds me of an eerie Halloween shot. Very compelling subject and the contrasting shaft of light in the dark woods plus the black and white treatment makes it very dramatic. The image is called Lost in Tree by Leslie Nutt, 23 points, second place. John says there are two completely different things happening in this photograph. The obvious one is that two lovely ladies are posing for a picture. They are dressed in period costumes with the one standing closest to the camera wearing a long blonde Rapunzel wig. Both ladies are staring right at the lens and their faces are well lit from the left side to upper left of the frame with a single key light at the back providing definition from the background. The illumination from the rear light is especially accented by the fact that a screen of smoke has been spread behind them thus spreading the light gain coming from the key light, resulting in a softer spread. The focus and exposure are spot on. As described, the photograph is really good, but then we come across a second thing happening in the photo, which in my view has no relation to the first thing I described. It happens that a stagehand is spreading the cloud of smoke in the background, the way stagehands do their job without giving much attention to whatever is happening in the scene. This in itself would not be an issue since the smoke haze blurs the stagehand into a soft silhouette that is almost invisible. But then we have what I see as a huge problem with the photo and that is that the raised hand of stagehand is blocking some of the light coming from the key light resulting in a cast shadow that falls in a shaft behind the heads of its lovely ladies. This is a monumental distraction from our main subject. I see no way to incorporate the shadow into the overall composition or even as an easy way to eliminate with software. Smoke is one of the most difficult things to paint or clone because they always invaluable see tattletale signs. So my advice in this particular instance is have the stagehand move away and then take the shot. Hey, the image is entitled Making Smoke Behind the Scenes by Serena Cernick, 19 points. Wendy says, this could be right off the cover of a fantasy book. While the subject matter may not be everyone's taste, it does what it sets out to do very effectively and professionally and is a convincing 
and well-designed image. The image is entitled Mystical Magical Water Fairy by Serena Cernick. 23 points, second place. Sylvia says, beautifully done creation and design. There's interesting light, sharp details, and subtle colors that make it appear rich. I also like the asymmetry of the design. The image is entitled Non-Cartesian Weed Stock by Brian O'Reardon, 21 points, honorable mention. John says, this photograph is as difficult to pinpoint as an abstract painting. When you first look at it, the one thing that immediately registers is what looks like a steel bridge on the upper half of the picture. But then when your eye travels to the lower half, it appears to be made out of cut out elements from possibly another image. However, the frustrating thing is that you can't tell what these elements are because everything has been overexposed in the extreme. Many times, abstract painting uses similar methods to throw you off your senses, so if that was the intention of the photographer, the image succeeds in spades. But, as an art and photo critic, I know there is one thing that all abstract paintings and photographs must possess, and that is compositional elements arranged in a cohesive manner where the characteristics of the total number of elements combine and give way in order to create a single distinct whole. In doing this, we provide compositional balance and harmony to satisfy the mind's hunger for equilibrium. So consequently, my suggestion here is to take the same elements used in the creation of this photograph and recombine them again in a cohesive composition that makes it easier to appreciate but less frustrating to view. Okay, the image is entitled Overexposed by Gary Marich, 16 points. Wendy says, this is a dynamic, appealing image that works very nicely. Other than possibly a touch tighter crop on the right, there's not much to fault on this. The image is entitled Rain Makes Everything Beautiful by Susan Bestel, 24 points, first place. Sylvia says, the maker of this photo was being very creative. The image has the illusion of much depth from the close-up of his hand to the dark reflection. The only thing that bothered me was that the foreground was not sharp. The image is entitled Recording My Reflections by Mike Kopkis, 23 points, second place. This is a beautiful image that looks perceptibly simple in the way it was composed, John says. The light hitting the red flowers and the flower and the color bouncing on the water drops is exquisite. Well done. I would only make one adjustment, which is extend the top of the image, thus bring the flower to the rest on the imaginary marking line of the partition of thirds. This change will make the composition perfectly balanced, and note, extending the top of the image could, in this case, be easily done with using the clone tool in Photoshop. The image is entitled Red Gerber Daisies by Vicki Wirt, 20 points. Wendy says, we see so many leaves in these competitions, but this photo shows that there is, there is always room for more. Uh, though the entire image is shades of brown, the subtle variations of ripples keep it visually interesting and engaging. It really, it's really a lovely work. The image is entitled Ripple Effect by Mike Lonsdale, 20 points. Sylvia says, this looks like it should be in a book similar to the creature from the Black Lagoon, except this character is coming out of the sea. I think the idea is good, but I felt that every single hairy surface in the entire image was overkill. Try using more smooth surfaces, like the tree trunks in the foreground, to alternate with some of the wavy lines. The image is called Sasquatch Sighting, Cobscook Bay, Maine, by Sarah Zeitlow. 22 points, third place.
John says this is a richly colored photograph of what appears to be flowers floating upward in fluid. I say appears because the blurred and vertically elongated flowers in the dark background exhibit the characteristics we associate with objects moving, either falling or floating upward when placed in a clear liquid such as water. I choose to believe they are floating upward because the flowers in the foreground seem to be rising from the ground. The foreground is visually interesting and clearly defined from the background. The overlapping flowers receding at the center provide an interconnection between the two planes. But the main focus of this image is being battled on by the flower at the center and the one on the higher planes. It is visually uncomfortable. There is not enough space for both of them to exist in this composition, so my suggestion is to crop the offending flower on the right. Imagine you are vertically splitting the photograph into thirds and then crop half of the right third section off. The result is that you will end with a balanced and interesting composition. This is good, but you need to do one more thing. Crop away the border outline. If you frame an image as happens to be the case here, especially with colors taken from the image, you are cutting off the mind's capacity to extend the image into infinity. When the mind is free to do so, it automatically corrects many little subtle compositional disturbances in the composition. Keep in mind that this is different than placing a photo in an actual frame. In this case, the frame acts as a window and the mind has no conflict with this. Now, notice how the viewing pleasures of the photograph increases once you crop that frame, stroke border lines, away. It will look stunning. The image is entitled Seabed of Hollyhocks by Brian O'Riordan, 20 points. Wendy says, this is a pretty image but a bit too soft and whited out. I also think it would benefit from some cropping on the left. The image is entitled Serenity by Darla Zajac, 21 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, eye-catching image with good placement of the sunburst pattern in the composition. Lines alone don't make enough interest to hold my attention for very long. The image is entitled Shaky Hand Fireworks by Bill Keaton, 20 points. John says, I see an eyeball staring at me. The eyeball resembles a flower, but my mind says it is an eyeball, maybe from a flower creature. My point is that our first impression is the one thing our minds visually catalog and respond to, and eyeballs are way up at the top of the list. The second after, once that initial impression is registered, it does a more detailed study of the visual element we see. In this case, those of a flower. Regardless of the method used to create this, this viewer only sees the final product. And in this case, as in other ones, what makes the viewing interesting, judged by a person's attention span, is the composition of the image. Since in this photograph, the main focus is placed smack at the center and fills almost the entire area, it doesn't take long to absorb it. Now, all visual artists want the viewer to camp next to their creations, so my advice here is to play with the composition. Since we basically have one element to deal with, try cropping it in different ways until you achieve a more interesting look. Here's one I would do. Find the midpoint on the yellow petals on the right side and vertically crop the image at this point. See the difference that makes? It's like magic. Now the eye is looking past you slightly to the right. The composition is not only more interesting, but it's also good. Now you will have the viewers looking back over the shoulder to see what the flowering eye is looking at. Once more, the mind is playing its usual tricks. The image is entitled Sunflower Kaleidoscope by Vicki Wirt, 20 points. Wendy says, I find this very effective use of creative editing. The composition is bold and the colors work well. The result is a dynamic, cohesive work. The image is entitled The Burning by Bill Keaton, 
21 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, I'm sure this image tells a story, but since I have no idea of what I'm looking at, it remains a mystery to me. Was that the maker's intention? The foreground object is sharp and well-placed. The image is entitled The Cost of Independence by Jim Rowe, 17 points. John says this photograph achieved a very, a very painterly quality that would make an impressionist angry with envy. Still, it needs a few touches to take its place next to Monet. As the colors appeal some, appear somewhat flat, and this is especially made obvious by the way the duck blends into the background. So to accomplish this, do two easy tasks. First, increase the vibrancy of the color and then increase the exposure to make the image brighter and full of light like the impressionist did. Lastly, the final touch is to decrease the offset to intensify the dark areas. This will give it a little more depth and make the duck more focused to the eye. Now you can place it next to the Monet. The image is entitled The Two-Headed Duck by Bob Kowaleski, 19 points. Wendy says, while it's impossible to ascertain what the original image may have been, this viv vivid geometric uh, image that resulted from swirling is both appealing and bold. Uh, with its interplay of black and brights, it can stand up well as an abstraction. Uh, the image is entitled A Fence No Longer by Franz Anheuser. Um, 23 points, second place. Sylvia says, this is a bright design with many interesting lines for the eye to follow. Even with all the curves, it appears flat. It might be more dramatic if the background were darker and a more unusual light source on it to give it more depth. The image is entitled A Twist of the Ordinary by Marge Brady, 19 points. John says this cut glass effect makes this portrait stand out like a gem. The one thing I would consider is cropping at the top and at the bottom of the image. The reason is that the vertical lines that cut the image vertically also create the illusion that the face of the child is elongated. So in order to maintain the childhood quality of the boy, a more rounded face, I would crop at the bottom up where the neckline of the t-shirt and almost the same at the top. As a side note, there are many mixed media artists that recreated this look by cutting and pasting strips of the same photograph in the same manner. The image is entitled Cute Any Way You Slice It by Salvatore Germano, 20 points. Um, Wendy says, this is fun and kind of interesting, but lacks a dy dynamism, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> let's just say dynamic and balance elements of some of the similar pieces in this competition. Uh, the image is entitled Double Vision by Jane Sidney, 18 points. Sylvia says, this is a lovely forest scene. One's eye always go to the lightest part of the image, and in this case, it's the long exposed foreground water. It actually overpowers the beautiful background. Try taking this image using various camera speeds to see which is better result for the image as a whole. The image is entitled Falls at Night Flash Photo by Rich Foley, 21 points, honorable mention. First impression, John says, I'm going to get splashed. In trade terms, the cropping of this image is too tight. Because of the way it has been cropped, I can't decide where my primary focus should be, the grapes falling onto the glass or the liquid splatters on the left. There are three things I would do to improve the composition. First, increase the exposure to bring out the highlights and then lower the exposure offset to create more depth 
and it'll eliminate artifacts from the background. This basically intensifies the dark tones without reducing highlights. Now the image pops out more in a darker background. Next, sample the background and add more canvas around the image. Then fill the canvas with the sample color. Doing this pulls the camera back and increases the picture frame. At this point, you can fine tune the composition by cropping a little here and there until the grapes and glass fall closer to the vertical axis on the rule of thirds. The line should actually split the grape that's about to fall onto the glass, breaking right down the middle. Now the composition is greatly improved. You might still need to tweak the background, softening the edges a bit so they blend perfectly into the new extended background. And finally, look at the splashes that were cloned in the image and rotate some of them around to different positions to avoid visual repetition. This is a telltale sign that your image was manipulated. And while you're at it, clone one or two more and add them over the extended background. Place them wherever it feels right. Oh, one final, final thing. Crop the glass along the bottom where the reflection is to recreate the curve of the glass sitting on a surface. Done. Now compare the before and after and smile. The image is entitled Grape Splash by Fran Marino, 23 points, second place. Wendy says, moody, rich, and powerful, with impactful use of lighting. The very different foreground and background are cohesive enough to work well. The image is entitled Lightning by Bob Kowaleski, 23 points, second place. Sylvia says, shooting water on flowers is always fun, and this is an unusual result. Since the flowers are not able to be identified, it becomes the design. Try cropping off the light, empty left side for a better composition. The image is entitled Masterwort in Ice by Ron Werman, 21 points, honorable mention. John says, I like the narrative quality of this photo, a theme that has been covered in other mediums such as painting, song, and theater. Since I have a theater background, I will use this approach to point a couple of things out about this image. First, storytelling is the main focus of this type of representation. It's like a comic strip, so you have to make it easier to read the story. In theater, we add more lighting and fog to provide a background or canvas for the imagery to stand out. In this photograph, the same applies. The saturation of the background color distracts from the imagery, especially since line drawing can be lost if the background lines are of the intensity as the drawing lines. So add fog to the background and intensify the lines of the subjects. Lastly, Extend the image a little more on the left for balance. The combined shape of the woman and the warrior on horse is heavy, so it needs a little more room at the end to get it visually away from the edge. Not much, just a little. And as a final note, experiment with applying a wash of magenta. It will not take away from the blues, but it will give the image a warm tone that tends to be gentler on the eyes. The key here is the word experiment, so have fun with other color variations. The image is entitled Riders on the Storm by Jim Rowe, 19 points. Wendy says, a nice piece that grew on me with time. The altering of the image is much more noticeable on the plants in the foreground than on the bridge or trail, uh, though making me wonder if the change to the angle of the shot that would have reduced the amount of space that the bridge and the rail occupy may, might make it even better. The image is entitled Round the Bend by Sarah Zeitlow, 21 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, this is a beautiful action shot that's also graceful and fun to look at. I like the sprays of water everywhere, including all the drops against the back background. The image is entitled Running in the Rain by Susan Vestal, 
24 points, first place. John says, this is a great example of a photograph that makes use of the directional elements in the image to create an interesting composition. The colors are kept within the same tonal range, a brownish sepia tone, so there is nothing to distract the eye from concentrating on these directional elements. What are these elements? Well, the diagonal shafts of light, the receding lines of the floorboards, the horizontals of the floor line, and the wooden ceiling beams, and so on. The one focal point in the image is the window seen in the background. However, since the tonal range has been kept to a minimum, it does not overpower the compositional elements that make this a great photo. If I were to tweak this image to heighten the elements I described, then I would do the following. First, I would increase the vibrancy of the image to put the color a bit, or to pop the color a bit, without affecting the tonal range. And second, I would crop the, at the bottom and left side a bit to increase the compositional focus on the window. Either way, it's still a great photo. The image is entitled Sunbeams by Mike Lonsdale. 21 points, honorable mention. Wendy says, coloring a portion of an otherwise black and white image is a time-tested technique and it is put to very good use here. I like the way that the white clothing, the faces, and of course, the flowers really pop. The image is entitled The Kiss by Darla Zajac, 22 points, third place. And that ends the uh, creative portion. And uh, now we'll take a look at the pictorial pictures. Sylvia says, this is almost like a texture shot because there are so many close buildings with no center of interest. I would have liked to have seen less foreground crop up to the taller tree foliage and more of the rocky mountaintop. The image is entitled, Ah, Italy, by Jim Rowe, 20 points. One looks at this photograph with the same interest we give a fossil of a woolly mammoth in an exhibit, John says. The photograph was taken in a way that showcases the various interesting things in the car's rear, and the color saturation heightens to give it a warm sort of glow. This is more noticeable on the green leaves in the foreground, which on their own are greener than an Irish tie, but when taken with the saturated orange, which is a complementary color of the green, it balances off well. The composition is good, off-centered but balanced, giving us a focal point with receding lines to the side. If I were to do anything to this image, it would be to increase the exposure just a notch and then lower the offset darker colors another notch, resulting in added contrast and depth, adding to the three-dimensionality of the car's form. But just as it is, the photograph works well. The image is entitled Almost Gone by Dennis Wirt. 22 points, honorable mention. This image uh, looks as if it could be on a birthday card. And I mean that in the best sense. It's very professional looking, nice angled, and sharp against the turquoise background. Bonus points for your dog's patience. The image is entitled Birthday Boy by Barb Cerrito, 21 points. Sylvia says, beautiful southwestern scene with sunlit rocks and interesting sky. The scene is so vast, I don't know where to focus my attention. What my eye does go to is the bright orange reflection in the river before the bend. I hope the maker decided to zero in on that for a close up. The image is entitled Colorado Horseshoe, by Maria Diaconu, 22 points, honorable mention. John says this photograph relies primarily on color and a leaf shape as its compositional element. The background is a covering of yellow flowers seen from above with a contrasting red leaf placed in the top. Its placement is at the center of the space but rotated at an angle. This creates an asymmetrical composition which tends to be more interesting. 
The one thing I would suggest to further increase the asymmetrical composition is to crop at the top and the left of the photograph more or less evenly, and then a little at the bottom. This will make the composition even more asymmetrical, slightly increase the scale of the leaf, but keep the composition balanced. Lastly, I would apply a slight decrease to the exposure offset to slightly darken the midtone values and shadows without affecting the highlights. This would give the bed of yellow flowers a more dimensional appearance. The image is entitled Dichotomy, Life and Death by Fran Zanheiser. 23 points, honorable mention. Wendy says, while, wa while waterfalls are inherently appealing subject, that doesn't make them a slam dunk. We've all seen plenty of that didn't work. Um, this one is very nicely done, though with excellent composition, balance, and clarity. The image is entitled Doan Brook in the Fall by Ron Werman. 22 points, honorable mention. I like the placement of the duck on, and the rock and catch light in the eye, Sylvia says. The lighting is good, but the image could be sharper. My eye goes to the whitish glass-like shape at the top of the photo, and I believe it interferes with the duck. The uh, image is entitled Duck on a Rock by Rick Mills, 20 points. John says this photograph of a man with a white turban and tunic is well made. Having the model look off camera in a three-quarter portrait pose gives it a feel of a moment of urgency resulting in a more interesting subject. Having an interesting face where facial lines read like life map is also a plus, and here we most definitely have that. The composition is good with the man's face positioned exactly at the center of the image. But the one thing I feel is slightly uncomfortable is the cropping of the top of the turban especially considering that there is ample space shown here below the neckline. And so, to bring further balance and harmony to the image, I suggest cropping the pho photograph slightly above the man's t-shirt. This will give the illusion of moving forward a step with the camera, hence a tighter composition that feels just right. And, as a final touch, consider that the photograph was taken on a very sunny day and I would also bring down the offset on the exposure to slightly darken the shadow without affecting the highlights. The resulting contrast would make the man's features even more interesting. The image is entitled Egyptian Merchant 3 uh, by Richard Ader, 21 points. Wendy says, this is lovely. Direct capture, this is, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just start that over. This is a lovely direct capture of a flower and the vignette treatment works well. Still, I'd like to see a slightly different approach. Maybe a bit of a change in the angle or placement. The image is entitled Fall Bloom by Maria Diaconu. 19 points. Lovely happy couple photo with good uniform lighting. The only criticism I have is that the light tree in the background appears to be coming out of his head. This could be improved with some burning in Photoshop, says Susan. Right, the image is entitled Friends Forever by Susan Bestel. 23 points, honorable mention. In this photograph of what is obviously an actor in a theater, theatrical performance, John says, we accept and expect the artificial lighting and saturated colors. The actor is posed in an interesting gesture and plenty of props have been included in the shot to give us a sense of the type of character being portrayed. It makes for a most amusing photograph that will definitely catch the viewer's attention. But it was this attention, retention, that led me to discover that the lens is focused on the telephone on the right so the face is slightly off focus. This is but a minor issue because overall the picture is sharp. But one thing I would certainly do is to crop the left side of the photograph at the point that the shadow of the ladder 
comes into contact with the sort support tubing of the lamp to better balance the composition. The image is entitled, Give Me My Money or Else, by Fran Marino, 21 points. Wendy says, this is a nice shot, but it could benefit from a different placement as it's just about right smack in the center. I also wonder if the foliage in the background could be muted or toned down a bit. The image is entitled Grayson Highlands Pony by Donna Schneider, 20 points. Lovely shot of a butterfly and flowers, says Sylvia. Good subject placement with subdued background. Love the detail on the left antenna. The image is called Green Striped White Butterfly by Mike Lonsdale, 22 points, honorable mention. This is a beautiful photograph of golden light and a soft diffused subject, or correction, soft diffused background, John says. The bird on a reed fits well in the composition and its form is well defined against the bright light. He stands in sharp focus while maintaining the same overall color tonal range in the photograph. There is just one easily corrected thing that takes away from the composition. And that is the top of the reed where the bird is standing has faded into the background. The reed is a strong compositional element of the foreground and it should stay there. So the fix is to copy a piece of the lower portion of the reed and paste it on top all the way to the edge of the frame. The difference it makes is noticeable and adds greatly to the composition. Sometimes it's the smallest of details that makes a good photograph a great one. The image is entitled Hidden in the Reeds by Rick Carroll, 20 points. Wendy says, this image grew on me with time. The contrast of the mushroom with the green of both the foreground and background, the usual angle of the stem, the unusual angle of the stem, and the sharply defined gills all work together to elevate this little fungus. The image is called Honey Mushroom by Joseph Miko, 22 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, beautiful fall scene, very sharp throughout. Great sky and foliage colors. I like that the water is on a diagonal and that the, some shapes in the clouds almost mimic the body of water. The only distraction, a tiny one, is part of a tree on the left edge. The image is entitled Lake of the Clouds by Donna Schneider. 23 points, honorable mention. John says this is another interesting image of a theatrical performer. The pose is effective because it makes an interesting compositional use of the dark background. Still, the image would benefit from the rule of thirds in its composition. Since the background is black, this is easily a corrected issue. Just add a black section to the top of the frame until the corner of the eye on the until the corner of the eye touches the imaginary crossing of lines. In doing so, the composition would look more balanced and much stronger since the face will end up closer to a point of interest. The image is called Masked Dancer by Marge Brady. 22 points, honorable mention. Wendy says, all I can say about this image is wow. While there are areas that would benefit from greater contrast or less shadow, capturing a shot like this so clearly with the horses going full tilt is quite a feat. This beautiful, exotic image would be perfectly at home in an issue of National Geographic, and I'm going to take a guess that it was shot in Mongolia, which is known for racing horses over rugged terrain. The image is entitled Mongolian Horse Race by Richard Ader. So close, 26 points, first place. Sylvia says, this seeing sunshot, I think that was supposed to be setting perhaps, um, has potential. I believe the main interest should be on the sun rays, blue sky, trees, and water. My suggestion is to crop some of the bottom off 
to get rid of the distracting and unattractive foreground elements. The image is entitled Park Ford by Rich Foley, 18 points. John says, I believe this is a perfect image because the treatment of the foreground image and its surroundings fits perfectly with the subject matter. The subject is clear, clearly defined and the changes on the pine needles from well-focused to soft adds interest and form to what could have been a uniform background. The contrast was kept in a tight rain, thus giving the photograph a pleasant and comforting appearance to what could have been a squeamish viewing. The mantis fits perfectly in the composition, maintaining at all times the center of attention. The image is called Praying Mantis by Dan Hennessy, 21 points. This landscape, or Wendy says, this landscape is inherently attractive, but it is lacking a focal point. The yellow leaves are bright, but not really sufficient to draw the eye and anchor the image. Uh, the image is entitled River Trees, Bedford Falls by Rick Mills, 18 points. Sylvia says, this is a fascinating architecture subject, and I wanted to check out every unusual detail. I like that the image was cropped so the darker areas at the top and bottom seem to frame the opening. The image is called Star Wars Cafe by Jane Sidney, 22 points, honorable mention. This photograph, John says, beautifully captures the architectural elements to add character to any building. The focus the photo was taken at the right time of day when overcast provides a nice light filter over surfaces. This gave the building a softer look that allows the viewer to better appreciate the interplay of visual elements without strong glares or cast shadow distractions. And while the photograph is great as is, I believe it could also provide the view with another interesting and perhaps more artistic view if it was cropped tighter. For example, at the top, crop just above the top of the handrail to eliminate the horizontal light fixtures going across the top windows. Then crop on the right, down the middle of the window's keystone. On the left, crop until almost the left side of the window arches, yes, lose the stairs, and do nothing at the bottom. The resulting cropped image will be a composition centered on the support and vertical post of the ladder and the horizontal beam supporting the decks. All the elements of the original shot are there, but the viewer can now concentrate on the geometry of the structure in a different way. The image is entitled Steel Stairs by Dennis Wirt, 21 points. Wendy says, this is a pleasant image from an interesting angle with a sky that we'd love to see around here every day. It needs more impact though. It might be more effective with a close-up of the rough bark or if it was taken before all the leaves fell. The image is called Sycamore Tree by Dan Hennessy, 19 points. Sylvia comments that this is a great capture of the seagull in its natural setting. I really love the talons, a detail not normally seen. I would like to have seen more space over the head, but that's minor. The image is entitled Talk to the Talon by Salvatore Germano, 24 points, third place. John says this is a most intriguing photograph. It was taken while the performer was illuminated by above stage lights at a 45 degree angle and with a visible key light at the rear effectively adding contour to the subject. So, the resulting image is crisp and well-defined against the dark background. I believe this forces the viewer to pay close attention to the performance without any kind of distraction. What's more, the fact that the image is in black and white makes it seem visually rich. Kudos to the photographer for selecting the right moment to take the shot. The inclusion of the rear spot really nails the composition. The image is entitled The Flying Yo-Yo by Darla Zajac, 21 points. This is an exquisite close-up 
that just jumps off the screen. It's so simple, but that it's so simple, but that works in its favor here. The crab apples, at least that's what I think they are, are beautifully detailed and the overall image is nicely balanced. The twig that seems to disappear as it reaches the right only adds to the impact. The image is entitled Wild Berries by Bob Kowaleski, 22 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, this is a great shot of a wood duck coming in for a landing. I like that its reflection takes in the entire bird and the subdued background is blurred while the subject is sharp. The image is entitled Wood Duck Over Glass by Rick Carroll, 25 points, second place. John says this is a gorgeous photograph that will benefit greatly from cropping to improve its composition and main focus. Crop on the left edge up to where the birch tree meets with the center of the bottom half of the overpass. Now cut at the bottom to where there is a stone and oval stone on the right side of the road. Now if you were to apply the rule of thirds on the resulting image, the edge of the front of the bridge on the right side of the image would be exactly on the vertical of thirds lines. And the top corner of the facade's crown would be just about at the crossing of corners. This means that the entrance to that bridge would be perfectly centered on the image, thus resulting in a stronger composition. The image is entitled Bridging the Gap by Dennis Wirt, 21 points. Wendy says, trees, a trail, and a gazebo seen from above create a colorful design. The image is pleasant enough, though it has a cool, detached feel to it. The image is entitled Colors of Fall by Dan Hennessy, 19 points. Sylvia says, nice shot of these cigar cactuses with good spacing of the groups. Wonderful dramatic sky. Most of the image is dark, but it doesn't feel dark with those great sun rays and peach colored atmosphere. The image is entitled Desert Sunset by Bill Keaton, 23 points, honorable mention. Photographing trees can be tricky, John says, because a scene, will, scene with the naked eye is influenced by the entire landscape but this does not always correlate with what's captured by the camera. So the main thing a photographer is to find in a compositional element to establish the main, focus, the main focus of the photograph. If this is not established, then the image may seem flat, lacking in depth, and overwhelmed by a lack of dominant visual details. In my view, this photograph has a great focal point that will not become obvious until some cropping is done. This will take place at the top, on the left side, and a little off the bottom. Crop on the top until you pass the nest shape made by the dark branch coming from the left side. The nest shape is up between the fork of the two, a fork made by the two trees on the left. Then crop on the left up to the inner edge of the trunk of the foreground tree on the left. Lastly, crop at the bottom until almost to the shadow of the middle tree on the right side grouping, only enough to go over the dark rounded shape on the extreme bottom right corner. Now increase the exposure of the image a notch or two and then lower the offset to deepen the darks without dimming the highlights. Check out the results. Now your focal point will be the tree almost at the center of the road and the lighted foliage behind it will lead the eye up the leafy path. And because of the color and contrast, it will look fantastic. Go give it a try. The image is entitled Dusk at Talmadge Meadows by Dave Saborik, 20 points. Wendy says, I get the sense that someone reached their limit in the creative category so this rather creative piece ended up in pictorial. Probably someone's seen your picture. It is an upbeat, nicely executed portrait. 
The image is entitled Football Cheerleader by Kathy Amari, 21 points. Shooting with, water falling on Shooting with water falling on a subject can be tricky, states Sylvia. In this case, I felt that there was way too much water for a good effect as the two figures were so blurred. It was hard to distinguish what I was seeing. Less water, more detail. The image is entitled Fountain of Waters by Gary Merritt. 20 points. John says this is an interesting nature image that combines several elements to provide a visually stunning photograph. Even though the image is contained within a circle, a shape that is very symmetrical and not very exciting on its own, the fact that it's filled with a pattern containing color-rich imagery makes for compelling and delightful viewing. Still, it needs one thing done to make it stand out even more. As is, the areas around the circle are lighter than the darkest areas inside it. This takes away from the central focus. So, all that needs to be done is to select those areas, including that ill-advised border, and darken it to almost black, Make sure to go slightly over the brownish nest weave and then feather that edge for a nice blend. The final result is that the colors inside the circle will pop out even more. The image is entitled Garden Glass by Brian O'Reardon. 24 points, third place. Wendy says, if you're working in, a, in the venable tradition of still life, You've got a lot of history behind you, so you'd better make it look good. This work does exactly that. It's a carefully selected group of items that all have varying shades of red on a warm-hued wood wooden table that complements the pomegranates, grapes, and flowers. The placement is just about perfect. Still lifes can be deadly dull if done poorly, but this, is, this one has a subtle, perfectly balanced beauty. The image is entitled Hydrangea Still Life by Vicki Wirt. 26 points, so close, first place. Seeing this image reminded me of Vincent, the song that starts with starry, starry night. The sky is good, but I also like the pink horizon and reflection and wish there was more of it, says Sylvia. The image is entitled Muskalong Milky Way by Donna Schneider. 22 points, honorable mention. John says pyramids are spectacular and monumental. And when photographed against an equally spectacular backdrop, they're even more awesome to behold. This photograph has all the elements necessary for such wonders. All we need to do is accent them out. To heighten them out, get closer. Eliminate all unnecessary space. They should fill your photograph. To do so, crop on the right and the left until the edges almost touch the corners of the pyramids, but leave a little space between the corners and the edges. You can always fine tune later. The city on the horizon on the right side of the image is too insignificant to be a dominant visual element, so with the cropping is now basically gone. Next, drop on the top about the same amount you cropped on the left side and a little more than half that amount on the bottom. So, what did all this cropping do? Well, it got the camera closer to the action. Next, increase the vibrancy of the color. And lastly, lower the exposure offset to add contrasts without losing your highlights. There are many ways to do this but once you're done, it will provide you with instant results in less than a minute. By doing these adjustments, you will get a crisper color. After all, you are not closer to the subject. Accents the texture of the pyramid, and above all, gives you a sky with lots of character. The image is called Pyramids Before Storm by Richard Ader, 21 points. Wendy says... I like these cone flowers, reaching in a diagonal through the fence, off to the right, and up towards the sky. The photographer has captured a simple, popular subject and improved it 
by taking a non-traditional angle and approach. The image is entitled Rabbit's View of the Garden by Mike Kopkis, 21 points. Sylvia says, this is a dramatic and artistic presentation of the common red clover. Who needs roses when we have these? The arrangement of lines for this composition is simple and effective. The dark background makes the sharply focused flower stand out. The image is called Reaching for the Sun by Rick Carroll, 23 points, honorable mention. John says this panoramic photograph shows two Civil War batteries in action. There is a spectacular plume of fire from the one on the foreground, which is awesome to behold. As a result of the firing, smoke fills the air and the battery on the far left is enveloped in fog. And when light hits fog or white smoke, it becomes a glare. There are several ways to approach this photo, but I will concentrate on what I would do to get the most out of the image. In the first place, I would crop off the battery on the left and concentrate on the one on the right. This, after all, is a center of interest where all the interesting action is happening. I would carry the crop edge to just past the stack rifles but not past the red pipe on the ground. If you apply the rule of thirds to the now cropped image, you will notice how well the elements fit within the points of interest. I would also crop a little off the top to maintain a little of that panoramic cinescope proportion. And lastly, I would play with the color vibrancy to make the fire plume go off the left edge more fiery and then play with the exposure and offset to get more contrast and sharpen the image. The results will be worth the effort. But like I said before, there are several ways to play with this image. The image is entitled Southern Counterattack by Serena Cernick, 18 points. Wendy says, the use of these twigs and this bud to break up and divide the space is very nice, as, it, as is the focus on the budding leaves. The photo has bold and effective composition. My only issue is with this is the fuzziness of the lower twig and part of the upper one. The image is entitled Spring 2020 Beaver Marsh by Rick Mills, 22 points, honorable mention. Sylvia says, this is a wowee. The sharpness of the owl, the light through its detailed wings, the blurred background, and those orange eyes all make for an outstanding bird shot. The image might be improved by cropping a bit of the orange leaves off the top so they're less distracting. The image is entitled Stare Down by Jackie Sieski, 22 points, honorable mention. John says this still life has the benefit of having some richly decorated objects. In addition, the jade green and soft red work well side by side. The fabric background helps produce a light absorbent surface without distracting from the objects. The composition, however, is slightly unbalanced because the vase on the right is positioned higher in relation to the other objects. Being larger and taller, it's a dominant compositional element that cannot be overlooked or ignored. It would be relatively easy to copy it and digitally lower it on the composition, the remainder space where it was originally placed. Lowering the vase on the right with its base slightly lower than the one on the left would balance the composition. But another solution would be to simply crop it out of the image and concentrate instead on the three other elements that work well together. The long neck base on the left, the bowl of shells, and the book. Then crop at the top to center the, on the objects and erase any leftover portion of the vase on the left with any of the blending tools. A final note, when photographing still life, always put, pull back to include more of the surrounding space. It makes it easier to compose later by cropping any unwanted background. But if you photograph too tight, you will not be able to pull back without using software tools such as Photoshop. I learned this the hard way. 
The image is called Still Life Simple by Maria Diaconu, 21 points. Wendy says, if you're going to go simple, then you'd better do it well. And this photo does it exceptionally well. The lighting, color, and level of detail are all very nice, as is the capture of the soft curve from the right to left. The contrast is the contrast of the sharply focused berries with the nicely muted background really makes them pop. This piece makes something uh, bordering on mundane and makes it special. The image is entitled Wild Batteries by Joseph Miko, 23 points, honorable mention. And that concludes the competition for tonight. Um, if you would like more information about competing or if you'd like to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, please visit our website, clevelandphoto.org. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our judges for their uh, thorough comments and I'd like to thank our readers tonight for conveying those comments to us. And thanks to all who entered and congratulations to our winners. Uh, we do appreciate any feedback you can give us. So if you send your feedback to info at clevelandphoto.org, we do look at those and we appreciate any comments we get. So thank you and have a nice evening.